you want to set up Amazon Simple Email Service, or SES, to send programmatic emails from your Rails application, then stick around for the tutorial to find out how. I'm Thomas with Braintrust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack, please subscribe below to receive new content. In this AWS Rails series tutorial, we're going to walk through how to use Amazon SES to send an email programmatically from your Rails app. It's important to note that when you create a new Amazon SES instance, you're going to automatically be placed in sandbox mode. What this means is that you can only send email to approved accounts. Don't worry, I'll guide you through the entire process of requesting removal from sandbox mode. Basically, this is just a mechanism for Amazon to try and filter out some spam emailers. The review process itself is manual. A human from Amazon will actually review your request. So this does take time. In my experience, it's been as few as five to 10 hours and up to 48 at the longest. But I just wanna point that out so that you can get this done ahead of time before launching your app. It's perfectly fine to continue moving forward testing your application, but you're not gonna to wanna to deploy an app that's in sandbox mode, otherwise nobody will receive emails. Finally, we're gonna walk through how to configure SMTP settings in the Rails app we created in the last tutorial. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll link it here in the card and down here in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into the AWS SES tutorial. Navigate to the AWS console, and then you're going to search for SES. The first thing we need to do here is verify a domain. If you don't have a domain yet, you can purchase one through AWS Route 53 or any other registrar. Personally, I think it's a little bit easier if you purchase your domain through Amazon's Route 53, as you can easily attach records into Route 53 from various services, in this case, SES. So click Domains, then we're gonna click Verify a new domain. Now we're gonna type in the name of the domain we purchased, abs-rails.com. I'm gonna click Generate DKIM Records. Essentially, this allows us to verify the authenticity of the sender. Now you'll click Verify. Next, you're gonna receive a list of various text, CNAME, and MX records that you need to add in your domain within your registrar. In our case, it's Route 53, so you get the advantage of, of using these Amazon services by just being able to click Use Route 53, and it's gonna add these records for us. If you're using a different registrar, that's completely fine. You'll just need to go through and create each one of these new records in that system. So next, click Use Route 53. Here you get a warning about your MX records. If you're already sending email from this domain, you may wanna pay attention here and make sure that you're not conflicting or, or removing MX records that you need. In my case, this is the first time I'm using this domain to send email, so this is not going to be a problem for me. So I'm gonna check email receiving record to ensure that all of the records get included, even this new MX record. Next, we're gonna click Create Record Sets. You won't have this option if you didn't use Route 53. This is just one of those nice little advantages of having everything within this system. Now that we've created our domain, you can see we're pending verification. This will just take a, a few seconds to maybe a few minutes. Okay, now SES is verified that the new records are in fact on the domain. If you've never used SES before, your account will be placed in sandbox mode. Typically when you're in sandbox mode, you'll get a blue warning at the top of the screen. Looks like this. And you need to request a sending limit increase, which will remove you once approved from sandbox mode, allowing you to send out emails to anyone. As mentioned previously, while you're in sandbox mode, you can only send emails to approved email addresses. You wanna ensure you get out of sandbox mode before you move forward with a deployment. Since I already have SES instances that I'm using in production, my account has already been removed from sandbox mode, but I'm gonna walk you quickly through the process of, of removing your account if this is your first time. And also you can always just click the link in that blue header bar if that appears for you. But just in case, if you don't see that blue header or you're not sure if you're in sandbox mode, just click sending statistics. So you can tell that I'm out of sandbox mode because you can see that my sending quota is 50,000 emails per 24 hours. Uh, sandbox mode typically is around, I think, one to 200 emails in a day. Uh, so that's kind of a dead giveaway there. Um, 
you're going to click request increased sending limits. This will take you to the support center and start to create a new request for you. So I just wanna provide as much information as possible to ensure I get approved. In our case, we're gonna use system notifications. Uh, this will be notifications from our application or forgot password, link clicks, and then you can add your website, abs-rails.com. Next, we will fill in how we're gonna use our email. Finally, we're gonna select our region, US East one, and the daily desired limit. Uh, we'll just say 10,000. Finally, we can provide our case description. Once completed, you'll click submit. Uh, but we're just gonna keep moving forward. And at any point, if you want to check on the status of your, of your support case, you can click support from the right side menu and click support center. Here you can see our case hasn't been assigned yet. Uh, so we're still just waiting for somebody to receive that and then manually review uh, to approve our account and remove us from Sandbox. As my account has already been removed from Sandbox and I was only creating that for demonstration purposes, I've actually clicked the resolve button on my case. You, if you've already requested and been approved on another domain within that same account, you don't need to continually request to be removed from Sandbox. It's on an account basis. Now that we've requested removal from Sandbox, we need to create a set of SMTP settings for our domain. So we're gonna close this window, go back into the SES console and click on SMTP settings. On this main screen here, you can see a couple of the SMTP settings we're going to use. We're gonna need the server name here at the top, as well as one of these ports. Ports 25 and 587 are recommended. While still widely used, port 465 is deprecated as the way this connection is established, it could lead to timeouts for client libraries like Action Mailer. So in our case, we're gonna use port 587 we still need to create an SMTP user password combination. So you're gonna click Create SMTP Credentials. So this is just an auto-generated name. Uh, I'll typically change this to be something relevant to the app. So in our case, I'm gonna do AWS Rails SES SMTP User. Now that your user's been created, you can download and show the SMTP credentials. If you forget these credentials or you don't save them somewhere, they're lost Forever. There's no way to recover these. Uh, so I do recommend that you download them and then put them in a safe place. And you can click show if you wanna just copy them into a text. Once you move on from this page, you can never gain access to these credentials again. So if you lose them, you just have to create a new user and save down those credentials and click close. Now we're going to navigate back to simple email service. This next step is optional. If you're in sandbox mode and wanna continue moving forward to be able to test, you're gonna go into email addresses. Here you're gonna add a personal email address that you will have to verify. This email address will then be approved to receive emails from your SES service until you get moved out of Sandbox. So only emails in this list that have been approved and verified will be able to receive emails from your SES service until you get removed from Sandbox. So here you'd click verify new email, you'd fill in your email address, click verify, and you're gonna click a link in the generated email that gets sent to the address you put within here. Once it's verified, then you can send tests to this email address. Once you're out of sandbox mode, this is no longer a concern. Now let's jump into Rails and configure our app to use this new service. I just wanna take a second to say that I hope you're finding some value in this video. And if you are, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for, for future content. If you do, we got a limited time offer here. All subscribers reward my coworker, Bear, with one treat. The goodest boy ever. So hit that subscribe button. Yeah, there we go, buddy. We've got our Rails app booted up on localhost port 3000 in the browser. Then in the terminal, you can see we've got one tab where we're just running Rails S, the local server, and another tab just in the, in the app itself so we can start to issue commands. The first thing we're gonna do is add the SMTP credentials that we downloaded from Amazon SES into our Rails credentials. To do this, you're gonna run Rails credentials colon edit. If you've never used credentials before, this is just a mechanism for 
within Rails to store secrets. You also can get an error as it doesn't know, as Rails doesn't know what editor you'd like to use to edit your secrets file. So typically you'd pass this in editor equals and then await command. Instead, I find it nice to actually just include this in the uh, bash profile or ZSHRC. To do so really quickly, we're just gonna open ZSH and then I add the command like so. Export editor equals, in my case I'm using sublime and then dash dash wait. So this will wait until you close the file to save and re-encrypt it. Once we've got that set up, you can just run Rails credentials edit and you won't get that warning. Here you can see it's already pre-populated with a secret key base. And a commented out example of how to use a service, in this case they actually happen to use Amazon. So I'm just gonna paste in the secrets block I typically use. I scope everything under AWS just as they did in the commented out documentation. Next, I prepend everything with SES so I know the specific Amazon service that I'm using in this case. These tend to stack up as you start to use various Amazon services in your Rails application. So I find it nice to just know which service each thing is related to. It can get a bit cumbersome to manage, so I tend to just prepend everything with the name of the service uh, to make it clear for myself. So once you've got that saved, you can break out of that file, which will re-encrypt and save that data for us. Now that we have our secrets in our Rails app, we need to actually use those in our environments. We'll switch back over to the application and navigate to config, environments, production.rb. Here we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna add our mailer config. Okay, again, I'm just gonna paste in the configuration and then we can walk through it. First, you'll tell Action Mailer to perform deliveries. Then you'll set the mailer delivery to SMTP. Next, we're gonna set your default URL options, which allows the link to helpers to, to work correctly within your emails. Finally, we set the SMTP settings. As you can see, we set the address here to our application secrets, SES server. Then we set the port to 587, the username to our SES username, and then finally using our SES encrypted password. Once that's saved, our production environment is ready to go. Since we haven't deployed our application yet, our production environment really isn't a lot of use to us. Let's go ahead and set up our development environment so we can continue to test. So you're gonna navigate to your development environment. We'll scroll all the way to the bottom. Right at the bottom, we're gonna paste in our development config. This is nearly identical to our production environment with a few changes. So here you can see raise delivery on errors. This is actually included by default in our development environment up here. So I'm just gonna delete that so I can keep all of our mail settings in the same location. Just kind of keep everything easy to read in the file. Typically, you would have that set to false, but in our case, we want to actually send this email and see errors if they arise. So we're going to have that set to true for now. Next, we have perform deliveries true, uh, just as we did in production so that we can test sending emails. After that, we have our URL options as localhost, port 3000. Again, we're using the delivery method of SMTP. And then you can see the same SMTP settings included below. So we're gonna save this file. Now we need to generate a mailer. As I'm just intending to demonstrate how to configure and set up email here, I'm gonna walk through the contact form portion of this very quickly. We need a way to actually demonstrate that mail is hooked up correctly, and a contact form is the easiest way to do so. So first we're gonna navigate back to the terminal, and we'll run Rails G Mailer. We're generating a Rails Mailer. We're gonna call that Mailer Contact, and the specific form, we'll call it Home Form. So Rails is gonna generate some files for us. Here now you can see in the views, Rails has generated a contact mailer and populated it with some content. This is the contents of the email that you will receive when somebody fills out your contact form. So I'm just gonna paste out the form values that we'll eventually add to our form and display on the front end of our site. We're just gonna add a name, an email, and a message. So we'll save that. Next, we'll include a plain text version as well to remove HTML and save that as well. Now let's go into our newly generated mailer and configure it. So here's our base mailer with our home form. I'm gonna paste in the contact mailer and we'll just walk through it quickly. So default to, this is the location that it's going to send the email to. So this will be your personal email address. You're also gonna want this to be 
the email that you verified in Amazon SES email addresses section to ensure that you can receive this if you're still in sandbox mode. If you're not in sandbox mode, this can be any email address you'd like it to be, but this is the email that will receive responses from your contact form. Default from, this is who the email is going to be sent from. So in our case, we're just gonna say no reply at abs-rails.com. Next is the home form. Here we will take in a name, email, and message as you saw before in the views and then set those values as instance variables. Finally, we're just setting the subject to contact form. We'll save this. Now on the home page, we're going to add in our form HTML. So here we're just gonna replace this uh, coming soon section. Actually, let's just move this down below the video. And then we're gonna replace this with our new form. Instead of pasting the form inline though, let's create a partial so that we can reuse this and place this form on other pages if we'd like to in the future. Um, we'll put this partial in our shared folder and we're gonna call it uh, contact. So now let's create that partial, shared, create the underscore contact.html.erb, save that file and then we will drop in the HTML content. So we'll save that view. Next, we just have two more steps. We need to add a route and a controller action. Within our config routes.rb file, we're gonna add a route for our mailer. Enter below home, we'll paste our new route. We're gonna match send mail. We're gonna pass that to the pages controller and the send underscore mail action that we're gonna create as a post. So next let's save that and go ahead and create that action in our pages controller. Here in our pages controller, you can see that we currently have the home action that we created in a previous tutorial. Uh, so we're just gonna enter down a couple of times and then we're gonna create our send mail action. But again, we're gonna paste this in and walk through it. So here's the send mail action. We'll set all of our values to the params passed in by the user on the front end. Next, we will tell the contact mailer's home form to receive these parameters and then deliver the message. Finally, we'll just redirect to our root path with a message thanking the user and telling them that we'll get back to them as soon as we can. So let's save this and go back to the front end. Here you can see our new contact form on the front end. Since we added our SMTP configuration to the development environment, we need to restart our server really quick so that those configuration settings will be picked up. So we're just gonna break out of our app and then restart it with Rails S. Now that our app's running, we're gonna reload the page and then we'll test our contact form. Finally, we'll click Submit. Next, you can flip back over to the terminal and watch the server to see if there were any errors with your mailer. Since we don't see any errors, we're gonna go ahead and check our email to see if this actually sent. And there you go, we have a new email from no reply with the subject of contact form which we added in our views. If you open up the email, you can see the values output that we passed to our contact mailer views. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This really helps out the channel. And feel free to leave questions or requests in the comment section below. And I hope this helped you get set up with SES and gain the ability to send programmatic emails from your Rails application. So with that, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.